Hey guys, for today's video I am going to be reviewing the Fenty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer and the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder. I am super fair, so the concealer shades I picked up were 100, 110 and 120 and then the powders I picked up lavender and butter. I'm going to be showing you my first impressions at testing out these products and then I'll also insert some footage after a few more days of testing and I can let you know my final thoughts. If you're new here then please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. Starting with some details, the concealer comes with 8 mils of product and it retails for 38 Australian dollars. This is described as a creamy, long wear, crease proof concealer with a medium to full coverage. It comes in 50 shades which is just fantastic and as I mentioned I did pick up 3. So the first shade 100 is for very fair skin with neutral undertones. The shade 110 is for very fair skin with pink undertones. And 120 is for fair skin with neutral undertones. Now the powder comes with 28 grams of product and retails for 44 Australian dollars. This one is described as a weightless loose powder to perfect and extend makeup wear. The first shade I picked up, Lavender, is for fair to light skin tones and is great for brightening. And then the shade Butter is for fair to medium skin tones. Even though Butter is described for fair to medium skin tones, it did look quite light, which is why I picked it up. But when I was buying them, I did have a feeling that Lavender is going to be the better match for me. I just want to show you some swatches of these concealers compared to some others in my collection. So this here is the Fenty Foundation in the shade 100. And then this here is the Fenty Concealer in the shade 100. Now, to me, they have totally different undertones. 100 is described to be neutral, but it looks more pink. The foundation in 100 definitely looks neutral, but this doesn't look like a match. This here is the Fenty Concealer in 110, and this is described for cool pink undertones. As you can see, these are meant to have different undertones and they look quite similar to me. This here is the Fenty Foundation in the shade 120 and the Fenty Concealer in 120. Now, they look like a much better match. This here is the Tarte Shape Tape in Fair Neutral. Here we have the ColourPop Concealer in the shade 02 and 04. This here is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer in C1. And this here is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the shade 05 Ivory. You can see here that these Fenty concealers are more along the lines of the ColourPop in 02. And that is just far too fair for me. I really prefer the Tarte Shape Tape and the shade 04 in the ColourPop. All right, let's jump straight into the footage of me testing all of this out. All right, so I have applied my foundation. I used the Fenty Pro Filter in the shade 120. I did just pick up a sample of 120. When the foundation was originally released, I bought the shade 100, and that one is just a bit too light for me. 120, I think, is a good match. It may be a little bit dark, so I'm probably somewhere in between. But anyway, with the concealers, I'm going to apply the shade 100 to my left side and 110 to my right side. Wow, that almost looks white compared to my skin tone. Okay, that is very, very, very fair. So let's go in with the shade 110. So 110 is also really bright. I feel like maybe I have to mix 110 and 120. I'm just going to put another layer of 110 on. The coverage isn't that full. I'd probably say medium to full. So let's go in with another layer and see how that goes. <sighs> it's so fair. Okay, blend, blend, blend. 
Okay, I think even that shade is too fair. Wow, I don't usually brighten under my eyes this much. I'm already so pale that I don't really need to be looking any more ghostly. Let's go in with 120 and I'm gonna do a second layer on the left side where I use the shade 100. This just looks so much darker. I'll see how it goes though. Okay, I think that looks better. It's still brightened, but it blends into the rest of my skin tone better. Whereas I kind of feel like this side is just looking a bit too bright, like it's too stark. All right, just looking at it without setting it, I do have a lot of fine lines under my eyes. I don't think I'm ever going to be creaseless and it's definitely settling into some of those but that's expected from me. The coverage isn't as full as I expected. I still feel like I can see just a little bit of a dark shadow on the inner corners of my eyes there. So even though the coverage isn't as full as I would prefer, I feel like it still has a really nice finish. It doesn't look really matte and drying, which I love. All right, well, let's just go in and set with powder. I'm going to take the shade Lavender to set under my eyes and then I'll go in with the shade Butter for the rest of my face. Now this shade is really interesting. <gasps> interesting. <gasps> <gasps> what was I thinking? Yep, just tipped the powder everywhere. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you can see the color of this powder. I really don't want to do that again, but it has that lavender tint to it. I've never really seen a powder like this before. Okay, so I'm just going back over each under eye, making sure I blend out any creasing that has happened while I've been talking. And then with my sponge, I'm going to dip into the powder and set under the eyes. Okay, so I definitely think it looks better on this eye. It is very brightening, as you can see on this side where I use the shade 110 and then the brightening powder, it is just like a bit too much, but I feel like the left side looks a bit more natural and, you know, it blends in with my skin tone better. I'll just give you a close up of my under eyes. So as you can see, it has settled into a few lines here, but as I mentioned, I do expect that. And then I'm going to set my face the same way using my sponge. Now this powder is quite light. It does have a yellow tone to it, but I feel like it'll still be a good match for my fair skin. Okay, I thought that might be fair enough, but I can definitely see it has darkened. It's darkened my foundation. Okay, now that my full face is done, I am liking the look of the concealers much better. I actually prefer the side where I used 110. At first, it looked way too bright, but now I think with the rest of my makeup done, it looks good. As for the rest of my face, the powder in the shade Butter has definitely darkened my foundation. Can you see the line on my neck there? I definitely can. And my face looks really dry. Like my chin looks disgusting. So here's what the under eyes look like. And then you get to my chin, like I almost don't wanna show you, but. <sighs> like, why does it look so dry? It looks disgusting. For reference, I have normal combo skin. I usually only get a little bit oily through my T-zone and the rest of my skin is quite normal. It just gets a little dry around breakouts. This is not normal for me. Well, as of right now, I am not completely impressed with these products. I am looking forward to testing them out over the next couple of days though. Sometimes it just takes a while to get the hang of products. So I'm hoping that's the case here because if this is how it's gonna look, especially on the rest of my face, 
I'm, I don't know, it's a no. All right, well, stay tuned to see how these products go. Hey guys, so it has been five days of me testing out this concealer and powder, and overall, let's just say I'm not that impressed. And yes, my eyebrows are darker. If you're wondering what looks so different, I got them tinted. So the first day I used the shade 110 in the concealer and set it with the lavender powder using my beauty sponge. So because my makeup wasn't as full on as it was when I first tried the concealer, this combo did look a bit too light for under my eyes on a daily basis. Once I applied the powder, it felt a little bit tight and it settled into all of my fine lines. So day two, I mixed the shade 110 and 120, and instead of using my beauty blender, I used my EcoTool sponge. Now this one is a little bit more dense. Instead of setting it with the Fenty powder, I went in with my model's prefer mineral finishing veil, which I absolutely love, but oh my God, it was a disaster. It went so patchy on the inner corners of my eyes, like it literally come off. I tried fixing it with a bit more concealer and a bit more powder, but it just, was not happening so i had to take off all of my makeup and start again so i went back in with the two shades of concealer and i did go in with the same powder but instead of setting it with a sponge i just set it with a powder brush it still didn't look very good it wasn't smooth and again it just settled into all of my fine lines day three i only used the shade 120 and i set with my fenty powder in lavender and i set it with the same brush i did the day before it still creased in all of my lines and it even went a little bit patchy in the inner corner again. I did end up setting my entire face with this powder on top of the Maybelline Superstay foundation. It worked all right, but I just think the powder was a bit too light and bright. On day four, I used 120 all under my eyes and then I went in with a little bit of 110 in the inner corners. This looked really, really nice before I set it with powder. It was creaseless, the color looked really good, and then I went in with my Fenty powder and my Beauty Blender sponge and just lightly set it, but literally instantly, crease city. So by day five, I was like, okay, either the concealer is really bad, or my under eyes are just super creasy and I've never even noticed. Like I always knew they were a little bit creasy, but I was like, this is really, really bad. So on one side, I went in with the shade 120, and the other side, I went in with my ColourPop concealer in the shade 04. They do have that same kind of consistency with the medium coverage. This fan squeaking is doing my head in, and I don't know how to fix it. I also went in with a different powder. I used my Maybelline Fit Me in the shade 05. Again, the Fenty concealer looked really good before I set it with powder, and then as soon as I added the powder on top, just creases everywhere. The ColourPop side did also have some creases, but it was nowhere near as bad as the side where I used the Fenty concealer. So overall, as for the shades of the concealers, none of them are really what I'm after. If you look at the swatches I did earlier, the Fenty shades don't really look close enough to the shades that I really like, like the Tarte Shape Tape and the ColourPop in 04. It says it has a medium to full coverage. To me, it's more medium and I don't find it is buildable at all. And the way it just settles into my fine lines after powdering, it's just not on. For the powders, I feel quite similar with the shades. I feel like lavender is too light, but butter is too dark. It's a very, very fine powder, which does make the skin look super smooth, but the way it set the concealers, I did not like it because it is so fine, it literally settled into every nook and cranny under my eyes. Overall, I do not recommend these products. Number one, if you have creasy under eyes, and number two, if you're after a full coverage concealer. If your under eyes are beautiful and smooth, then go ahead, give it a go. But for me, it's not working. And for the powder, if you're as fair as me, I'd just pass on that one too. I really, really wanted these products to work. I absolutely love the packaging of the powders and because Fenty is so inclusive, I wanted it to work for us fair people, you know? If you've tried out this concealer or powder, then let me know in the comments below what you think. I would love to know how it worked on you and if you have any tips or tricks on getting it to look flawless, then let me know. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching and this review helped you. If you aren't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.